Thank you for such a kind introduction and welcome everyone. Time, time, time. I want you to hold that word in your heads as we go through this presentation. So, today's Thursday. Next Wednesday, we have a meeting. But we hear it's been moved forward by two days. How many of you think it's on Monday? Raise your hands. Anyone think it's on Friday? Raise your hands. Okay, so those of you who said Monday, believe yourself to be still standing in time and time coming towards you, also known as the time-moving metaphor. Whereas those who said Friday see themselves moving forward in time, also known as the ego-moving metaphor. So, with that thought in your head, I'd like to talk about the topic of my uh, presentation today. English across the generations. How the language has evolved and adapted since the first dictionary was published in 1755 by Dr. Samuel Johnson. It, ha it contained 40,000 words and phrases and illustrations. Fast forward to 2012, and we have the Cambridge Corpus, which is a resource, a body of work made up of American and British English, academic and business, as well as from people who take English exams. In 2012, the number of, for this body of work was 1.8 billion words. So you can see how the words started a small number and have grown to a larger number. And this is what tends to happen with, with words. They fall out of use and new words are invented. Here are some old words that have gone out of use. Aerodrome, we now say airport. Untoward means un unintended or unacceptable. Now we just use those synonyms. And a squib, probably no one's heard of this word. This used to be to describe a satirical piece of writing. Now we just talk about satire. We've just gone through a very difficult period and we're still living the COVID pandemic and here are some new words that have come in. Blur's day. You've maybe all had this feeling. You wake up one day and you're not sure which day it is. Miley Cyrus. This is rhyming slang for coronavirus as in he has a dose of Miley Cyrus. And COVID idiot. These are two words put together. A portmanteau word COVID an idiot, to describe someone who perhaps is not keeping social distancing rules. <laughs> so the language adapts and changes according to its environment and what's going on and how people want to use it. A very important topic at the moment is climate change. Or is it climate crisis? Or is it climate emergency? There are many different ways of describing this existential threat to all of us. And here I've just put up a few words that we've now come to associate with climate. So degrowth, the idea that we cannot keep continuing our GDP growth. Economies perhaps cannot keep growing. Maybe we need to think about static or even negative growth. Morbique, I don't know if any Portuguese speakers here, but this is a word that is putting together the word morbid and eek, a bit like saudade in Portuguese. 
a sort of nostalgic feeling for something that's lost. And greenwash. You've maybe seen this in the press, on the TV. This is where companies say they're doing lots of environmentally friendly things, but are not actually acting on them. On the other side, we've got some more positive words about the environment. Gaia, which used to be the ancient Greek word for Mother Earth, the planet we live on. Green growth, the idea that actually, yes, maybe we can develop some sustainable energy sources to allow us to keep growing. And the Green Deal, which we heard a lot about recently, how we actually fund these changes. So the language also changes with the environment, what, what's happening around it. Now I'd like to introduce someone who you may know, George Orwell. In his book 1984, he said, who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. In this same book, 1984, he introduced the idea of newspeak. Don't you see that the whole aim of newspeak is to narrow the range of thought? In the end, we shall make thought crime literally impossible because there will be no words in which to express it. In that world, in that book, the authorities believed if people didn't know the word revolution, for example, they wouldn't be able to have one. So by reducing the number of words, it makes people less, less likely to rebel and maybe easier to control. Nowadays, we, in, in English everyday speak, most of us use between eight and 600 words. Similarly, similar number in French. So a, quite a limited number. However, there are other ways we reduce and minimize and abbreviate our language. We've, we've all used these acronyms, you only live once, fear of missing out, working from home. Anyone recognize a GG, a GG, my kingdom for a GG? Text speak from Richard II, a Shakespeare play, a horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. GG being a common um, way of talking about a horse. And em emojis, we all use emojis now. They're ways of expressing our emotions and feelings. And abbreviations, VAX, abbreviation of vaccination, has just been voted word of the year 2021 by the Oxford Dictionary. So, at the start of this talk, I asked you to think about time. If there is a credible threat to our existence on this planet, how does that sit with our perception of the future? The following was said recently to, by a 22-year-old graduate, Harun Fakir. I saw a post on Instagram the other day asking if you'd rather travel 100 years backwards or forwards in time. And all the comments asked, are we even going to be around in 100 years? Those comments sum up people my age and our attitudes towards the problems we face in a capitalist system. At the recent COP26 meeting in Glasgow, many organizations and governments gave pledges about what they would do, NDCs and other abbreviations. Let's see what happens as we move forward in time. So at the beginning of this talk, I asked you to think about time, and I hope very briefly, I've shown you how the language adapts as we move through time, and also how we are quite inventive in the way we come up with ways to express ourselves. So, we have different perceptions of time. Remember Monday or Friday? We've seen how the environment can shape our language. 
But we've also seen that it's possible for us to come up with new ways of expressing ourselves, our feelings, our emotions, our rational thought. So, if I could leave you with one thought this evening, it's how our language is always changing, always evolving, but you all can contribute. As a thought experiment this evening, see if you can come up with any new abbreviations. Design a new emoji. Come up with a new acronym. So, thank you very much for your participation and your time.